Hello and welcome to this James the Bike Guy where today we're getting to take a look at what I think is a Goldilocks build in Trek's brand new Roscoe lineup. The Trek Roscoe is their rowdy hardtail with aluminum frame and 140 millimeters of front suspension. And this one in front of us here is the Trek Roscoe 8. And the 8 is a all-star hit as far as parts and components for the price of $23.29. So in this video, we're gonna see if it stacks up to what that price calls for, go over the new geometry of this brand new bike, and then of course, we'll find out exactly what it weighs. So go ahead and stick with me and let's check it out together. So talking Trek Roscoe. Well, Trek Roscoe has been in Trek's lineup now for the third generation. And this bike is totally new and different compared to the previous generations because it's taken a entry level to intermediate level hardtail and turned it into a top end performer. For somebody that's looking for a rowdy bike to supplement their full suspension, maybe just one bike to have fun, or a bike that's gonna take you from that entry level mountain biking space to more of a performance area. And it really makes a big difference in the frame geometry, which is where I wanna start with this bike. So this bike being the new frame, this is gonna run 29er wheels, which is new for 2023. Previous gens were all 27.5 plus, so big 29ers, and then up front, 140 millimeters of travel. And what that rocks out to is that this is gonna have a head tube angle of 65 degrees, an effective seat tube angle of 73.1, and then you're gonna have a chainstay length of 430 millimeters. And those are some pretty rowdy geometry numbers with that front end being pretty slack and the seat tube being steep so that you'll be able to get good climbing performance as well as descending stability. But then they lengthen out the effective top tube length to 630 millimeters, which gives the bike a reach of 455. Now, if your eyes glazed over on all of those numbers, what that effectively means is they've really elongated the front end of the bike. They've slacked out that fork. You can see it's kind of angled out, which that increases stability. Lengthening the front end of the bike means that it tightens up the back end with that 430 millimeters chainstay length, allowing the bike to be really poppy and super playful. But because of the slacker geometry on the front end, that's going to make it descend and be stable. And then that seat tube angle being steep is going to help with the climbing performance of the bike. When you get that seat tube angle a little steeper in the back that gets you over the front of the pedals, brings your weight forward enough that you can keep seated on a climb without the front end popping up. And that's something that, say, overshocking your bike by just adding a longer travel bike can often mess up. So I love that Trek, of course, is engineering that into the frame. Now, speaking of over-traveling the bike, now this frame is rated up to 150 millimeter travel fork. Of course, it's coming stock with this 140, but it's awesome that you could go up to 150 millimeters. Now tying this frame together is gonna to be through what they call their alpha gold aluminum. And the alpha gold aluminum is gonna be shaped and butted tubing. You can see it's got internal cable routing. It does also have this inch and an eighth to inch and a half head tube. And I like how chunky the tubing is. You know, it's a bit thicker and a bit more oversized, which should aid in some of the strength. A couple other things to mention, brand new for 2023 is through axle. That's right, this bike no longer has quick release. It is a through axle out back, which is a much stronger and stiffer way of tying that back end of the bike together. The frame goes together with that internal cable routing, but it comes out just in front of the bottom bracket going through the down tube, making cable routing and whatnot much easier for an internally routed bike. You also have ISCG mounts for chain guides, bash guards, all that kind of stuff. It's nice to see those mounts. And then you're also gonna be running a threaded bottom bracket. So that goes together with a 31.6 seat post diameter, of course, internally routed, boost front and rear to have very modern specs for a hardtail that gives you a great place to either ride it exactly as it is or make this your toy to upgrade over time. Moving into the part spec of this bike, I said this is kind of the Goldilocks for 2329. And by that, I mean this bike, in my opinion, has just about every spec that you need and stays away from having things that you don't necessarily have to have. And to start off with, that's because the front end, that 140 millimeter travel is gonna be courtesy of RockShox 35 fork. This fork uses 35 millimeter stanchions. It is still on the more mid-level side of suspension forks, 
but it gives all the stiffness that you'd need. It also has the ability to lock out the fork as well as adjust compression while you're riding. And then on the non-drive side, you'll see it's air adjustable. So what the air adjustable allows you to do is that can dial in the air pressure and air spring rate based on what's gonna feel right for your weight and your riding style. Coming away from that fork is then gonna be this one by 12 drivetrain from SRAM. Now this is a mixture of SRAM's GX, which is their mid-level components, and some NX components, which is one step below that we'll get into just a bit. But here, this Eagle drivetrain runs a one by GX crank set up front with a 30 tooth narrow wide chain ring that is gonna help with chain retention and it goes out back to this GX Lunar rear derailleur. This guy is clutched, so the chain is gonna be nice and tensioned, so it's not gonna bounce around on you. And then it goes through an NX level 11 to 50 tooth rear cassette. Now this cassette is a spot where they did drop down just a level. Most of the time with GX, you'd see a 10 to 52, but instead an 11 to 50, so slightly less gear range, but it is still 12 speeds. And then shifting is gonna be courtesy of some NX shifters as well. So the NX shifter is just one grade below, but it operates the same as GX. So thumb button to go to a harder gear, thumb button here to go to an easier gear. So you can go between those two. And that is then gonna be slowed down via some Shimano MT4100 brake levers. Now this is not my favorite brake lever. It does have a long reach arm and it kind of doesn't quite feel the best on some of the hardest descents but I like that they've matched up this lever with a pretty good caliper, the MT420 caliper, which has four pistons, both on the front and the rear. Now dialing into cockpit, it is all aluminum here with a Bontrager alloy handlebar. This is a 31.8 millimeter bar clamp going through this blender shorty stem. Of course, with that extended reach of the frame, you run a little bit shorter stem. You can see this is a super wide setup. And then out back is gonna be a Bontrager Arvada saddle mounted up on a Trans X dropper seat post. And this dropper seat post is actuated by this one by style lever. So if we go ahead and pull the lever, you'll see the dropper post is gonna pop right up. Now, something that's pretty neat about that is that dropper post is gonna be size specific. So as the bikes get larger, that drop length gets larger as well. And that's gonna allow the most amount of drop you can have for the frame size of the bike. Now dialing into wheel size, this is a place where we should talk about this compared to the previous generations. So in all the previous generations, the wheel size was always a 27.5 plus, meaning it came with a 2.8 inch wide tire on a 27.5 wheel, which gave it a little bit chunkier tire, a little more cushion or side absorption of the bike. And in fact, in the 2023 Roscoe 6, which is the entry level version, that is still rocking that 27.5 plus. 27.5 plus is often a great place for an entry level rider that's kind of going up to that mid-level setup. It gives a little extra balance point and a little extra cushion. But for a bike that you want to be a bit more rowdy, I think they've spec'd it right with these 29 by 2.6s. So this is going to give a much larger outside rolling diameter. You then have Bontrager's XR4 tire, which personally I've used a lot and I do like how this tire feels. It makes a good mix of both the side knobs, which are really chunky, but then the center knobs have just enough siping and cut to make the rolling resistance not too bad. And wheels are another shining spot on this rig, which are the Line Comp 30 wheels. This has been a really nice wheel that they've used for quite a while. It's got a 29 millimeter internal width rim. It is tubeless ready, of course, but it's laced up with these Bontrager Rapid Drive 108 hubs. The Rapid Drive 108 gives you 108 teeth of engagement in the back end, which is a super fast engaging hub, something that most of the time you would have to spend, you know, quite a bit of money on a hub set to be able to get that. And I love that this Roscoe 8 comes with that put together. And that's kind of why I think this part spec really works for this rig, because you've got an awesome drivetrain with just enough that you need, a fork that works pretty well, and a solid wheel set to match up with the frame. Well, anyways, enough talking about that stuff. Let's find out what this bike weighs in at. The actual weight of the Trek Roscoe 8 and a size large is going to come in and weigh 29.12 pounds. Thanks for watching this video on the 2023 Trek Roscoe 8. Can't wait to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Go ahead and let me know what you think. While you're at it, be sure to hit the subscribe button and browse the channel to see other videos like this to check out as well.